So I'd like to welcome y'all here this morning. We'll begin the service today. We'll sing number 307, Amazing Grace. 307. But a few weeks ago, we talked a lot one day here about grace and mercy that God has to bestow upon each one of us if we ask him. But Amazing Grace, written by John Newton, a man that did not live a good life to begin with, was a slave trader. But he was able to come to the Lord. The Lord was able to show him. And he wrote some beautiful songs. And he preached a lot of messages. Now I know that his condition is between him and the Lord. But this is a beautiful song and about how that amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind but now I see and that's with each and every one of us that can be as that was a testimony of John Newton's about what the power of God could do for us and that testimony can be right within you you can have that same mes message there of how amazing and how sweet 
that the grace and the mercy of God is that can save a wretch like you and like me. I was once lost, but now I'm found. And that can be on each and every one of us of mine. And let's let that be a part of our life. There's nothing more important than being found by Jesus Christ. By going to Him, seeking Him. I was blind, blind to the salvation, to the mercy, to the love of God. But now I see. I see how wretched and poor and miserable I was. But now I see the goodness and the mercy and the love of God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. And what they have done for me and what they can do for you. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Is that precious in your sight today? Do you want to follow him? Do you know him first of all? Do you truly know Jesus Christ? And if you know him, he says you know the Father. And if you know the Father, and you know Jesus, he says if you know me, he says if you love me as you should, he says, keep my commandments. Do the things that I have asked you to do all the way from the beginning of this book throughout the end. There's encouragement to it for us all. There's chasing and rebuking. There's encouragement. There's love. There's mercy. There's promise. But from the very beginning, he required obedience. He required obedience out of each and every one of us. So much so that he gave his servants direct commandments of how that he would have for them to live all the way through from the beginning of time, all the way through after he was here, after Christ was here upon the earth. He told them how that he would have for them to live here upon the earth so that we might be able to have eternal life. And when I say we might be able to live, that is that if we're here upon the earth, then we accept Jesus as our Savior. We accept Him and have full faith and trust in Him, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. That is the beginning. And repent of our sins. Repent. And be at one with the body of Christ. With God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord. Repenting. But this morning I want to read some throughout the entire Bible here. About what he says. About how he would have for us to live. And why he wants us to do these things. And to begin with let's turn to Exodus. Right? Just right after Genesis there in Exodus and read a few words, read a few of what he has to say there. This will be in the 20th chapter of Exodus. And remember what had taken place. That God had brought people out. There had been men upon the earth. He had given commandments to Adam and Eve there of how to live. They had fallen. He had made a way for them to be lifted up. Man had become so wicked throughout the world that he destroyed the world with a flood. Then men had, after that, had multiplied and multiplied here upon the earth. Hundreds of years later. And now God's people were under bondage down there in Egypt. God had seen the bondage that they were under. And he had brought them out. Brought them out from there. And was giving them 
understandings of what he would have for them to do and telling them how he wanted them to live and why. And here was the words starting there at the 20th chapter, first verse, and God spake all these words saying. Now these are the words of God. And things that we should be listening to and believing and putting our faith and trust. If it's in this book, it's a word of God. And we have no other, we cannot just say, I'm going to pick and choose, but I've got to listen to what his word is and then live by it. And that's what he was wanting these people to understand right here. He had brought them out of the land there. And here he said, and these are the words, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And that's the thing that I want us to look about and think about somewhat in our day. Now this is what he was talking to them thousands of years ago, but in our day, we have been talked about quite often is that we should have no other God. The things of this world, God has brought that out so plain to us that the things of this world is an enemy to Him and that we should not let the things of the world become our gods, whatever it might be. But if we aren't careful, we can be just what happens here. But He was warning these people about that. He says, I am the Lord thy God who have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. He is the Lord our God that has brought us out of bondage from Satan in our day. We were each and every one of us, they were bound as slaves there basically to the Egyptians. You and I in our day were bound to a slave as a slave to Satan. We were a servant of his. We followed him. We did the things that he was the one that was instructing us and carrying us into. Just as there, and he says, Thou shalt have no other gods but me. And he makes that very plain and clear now. That you should have no other God but the God of heaven and his Son, Jesus Christ. That we should let nothing else be so important to us that that is what we worship. Thou shalt, make, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I am the Lord thy God. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto, upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now I want us to think a little bit about these things here, that what he's saying. He says, Thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that is heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth now they had a a lot of things that they would do they would form these type things statues we might call it today a graven image that and they would let those things become their gods they would worship them instead of the lord god and he's warning them he says do not let these things become your gods you know what happens today in our day so much that we take these things and we worship ourselves and we're constantly going around and making pictures of ourselves to send to someone to show them, is it to glorify the body? Is it glorifying God when we're doing that? Or is it when people are always making these selfies and stuff and got to have it just right so that I can have somebody to praise me for what I look like or what I'm doing today? And what is he saying here? He says, don't let any of those type things get to where you worship it. And it is something that is done so common today and that people are trying to impress somebody by what they are doing today and how they look. 
instead of impressing God and looking godly and letting that be what we want people to see in us instead of the things of the world. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate them that hate me. He says he's a jealous God. We have to serve him and him alone. We have to give praise to him and him alone. Not bringing it to ourselves. But look at us. Look what we're doing. Look how, how I have this body all adorned or whatever. And look how I am worshiping that. That is my God. He says there he's a jealous God. And that thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I am the Lord thy God for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God there is no room in a born again Christian's life of glorifying himself over God never never any room for that he says, I am a jealous God. It's just like with a, a husband and a wife. There is no room for a husband and a wife, for another from the opposite sex or whatever to come in and be a part of them as a married couple. Now they can have friends, but never can they come in and cheat on each other on those things because that marriage is just as sacred there as it is here with God and he says I'm a jealous God there is no room for any other God in your life or any other thing that glorifies you tries to glorify you above me there is no place for that at all in a Christian's life. And showing mercy unto the thousands. Now listen, and here's that grace that we talked about. He says there that to those that hate him, the wrath of God will come down upon them. But he says, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And that's exactly what he's wanting to be done in our day today. You can look around and you can say, well, you're, you're reading now of things that happened 4,000 years ago. Yes, I am. But it's the same God that was instructing these people in that day. It's the same God that's instructing us today and asking us and showing us how he would have for us to live. And what he says here, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Just that plain and simple. He says, you love me more than you love yourself and you keep my commandments. The things that I have asked for you to do, the things that I asked for you to not be involved in, you're doing that. And thou shalt not take the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And we can hear that so much today. As people go around and they just, they're saying, Oh my God, constantly. And when they're excited about something. Using his name and constantly about things that you can hear and he says here thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy and that was a direct command one of those ten commandments that he has 
Today we should keep the Sabbath day holy just as every day we should keep that. They had certain things that they had to do under the law. God, Jesus Christ came and he fulfilled that law and he established the law of grace. And we should be able now to keep every day holy because we have the spirit of the Holy Ghost within us. We've got that new birth, that new life now. And we can keep every day holy. Remember to keep the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And we should be saying remember to keep every day holy in our life. Six days shall thou labor and do thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no work, not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that is within the gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, and rest is the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed in it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth. This is a, another a direct command from God, and it's talked about in the New Testament. It's talked about by the disciples and, and Jesus in those days also. And I want you to all to understand these things, young people, older people, whoever it might be. If you have a father or a mother here, a natural father or mother here upon the earth, he says, Honor thy father and my mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now granted, again, he's talking here to his people. He's talking to people that he had instructed how to live, the parents how to live and to be able to instruct their children. And those parents should be, have been living a godly life. And he was telling the children there to honor those parents that are living that godly life. And we should be living, parents should be living today a godly and a holy life. And the children should be honoring those parents because of that. And looking upon them with honor, not above what God's honor would be. But they are my parents. They are godly people. They are living in accordance with the work that is going on upon the earth today. And I must follow those things, hear it, if I am going to live and be in their home. And that's what he's saying here. Honor thy father and my mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. And there were certain things that, was, that you go back through the law and he said that, but he was talking about thou shalt not go out and kill, just killing people because you have malice for them. Thou shalt not commit adultery. These are still commandments for us today. And we see how that it is just rampant throughout the land that people just go out and kill people for no reason whatsoever just to see them die. And here he's talking about thou shalt not commit adultery and that is rampant. People look around and say it's my body. I can do whatever I want to do with my body. If I enjoy that and I want to live in adultery and fornication or whatever, I'll do it. But it's a direct commandment from God. He says, thou shalt not commit adultery. You shall not live in that type of lifestyle. Thou shalt not steal. Go out and take things that do not belong to you. And we also, we see those things rampant throughout the land today. People just look like, well, if there's something there that I see and I want it, I'll take it. We'll go into a store, they do quite often now, and just load up stuff and walk out. Because they say, I want it. But the command from God is thou shalt not steal. You shall not take something that does not belong to you. It belongs to someone else. You have no right to that. 
but throughout the world today that is looked upon very lightly. And it can be in so many things there that can happen. Thou shalt not steal. You ever think about that stealing time from someone? We should be very careful how we use our time. And that we don't do things so that we hinder other people from being able to do what they should. That we are on time and that we pay attention. And in everything that we do, we look at how can I help others in the things that I am doing. What can I do to encourage them? How can I make their life better? Not stealing, not taking anything that does not belong to us at all. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, but looking upon your neighbor and having love with your neighbor. Not bearing false witness, not going out and, and slandering them, but tr always being truthful. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And look around throughout the world today, and is that right within us? Can it be? He says, Thou shalt not covet. You shall not have a lustful desire. For whatever your neighbor has, he goes on, he covers several, and nor anything that is thy neighbor's. But most of all, he goes back, you shouldn't co covet your neighbor's house. And look around throughout the world today, we see so much of how that people, well, somebody's got this at their house or this. I want it too because they've got it. Or I want this man's wife, I, she looks better, or she would be better than my wife. I want her. Get with your wife, and you love that wife, and adore that wife that you have, that you took, and that you proclaimed that you, you made a vow that you would keep her. That is the thing. He says, don't covet that. Don't covet anything. That your neighbor has. Have a lust for it. Because they have it and you don't have it. Never having any kind of a mind like that at all in a Christian's mind. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise and the trump, trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And here was the Lord God speaking there from that mountain think about how amazing that would have been to be able to hear the Lord God speaking but you know something each and every one of us can hear him speaking in our heart in our mind today he has told us after Jesus Christ came, there is, there is, it's fine for us to have these things written down and, and that we can live by them. But you know something? The Spirit of the Holy Ghost, that new birth, puts all of these things in your heart, in your mind. And that new birth will carry you away from every bit of this. He will carry you away of not having malice that you want to kill your brother or your neighbor. He will give you to where you're wanting to do everything you can to live a holy life every day. He will carry you away from the lust of adultery, fornication, pornography, all of those things. That Spirit will take all of those things away. He says, I will write it within your mind and in your heart. That's what He said that He'd give to us. He wrote it down on a law, in the law, he told them. And then later on, he wrote it on tables of stone and gave it to them. But he's told us 
that I'll write it in your mind and in your heart. Isn't it that wonderful to think about that we can have that? And it is there constantly, every day. You don't have to go sit down and read it. It's nice to read these things and know it. But he'll put it in your heart so that any time that you see that temptation, it is there for you to use to overcome. The power of God is there, my friends. To overcome Satan in every single thing. Doesn't matter what it is. He is there to overcome it right within you. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou unto us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us lest we die. They were afraid of what had taken place there. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you and that his fear may be before your faces, that you sin not. Now God's come in our day. Through Jesus Christ, he came to prove us. Jesus Christ came to give us that new comforter, that new spirit, that we sin not. Isn't that wonderful to think about? of what Jesus Christ is there. These people had law. These people had Moses. They could listen to these things. And he says that his fear may be before your faces that you fear not. And that his spirit might be within you today that you fear not. And you sin not because of that spirit of the Holy Ghost there. And the people stood afar off and Moses drew near into the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, You have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall you make unto you gods of gold. What he's saying there, and, and again, this was 4,000 years ago and under those things and what he's saying there, I want us to take out of that as we should not make gods of anything here upon the earth above him. He says, you shall not make with me gods of silver or gods, neither shall you make unto you gods of gold, anything that is upon this earth that comes between us and them, him. He's a jealous God, remember that. And then he went on to tell them how simple he wanted them to live. He says, An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen, and in all places where I have recorded my name. I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. You hear how he just had a commandment there for him. A work, a work for them to do in that day a very simple work it was not how to go out here and with all the gold and the silver and the things that man was worshipped he just says make me an altar there out of earth and you do the sacrifices that's within the law upon that and I will come unto you and I will bless you now what's he telling us to do in our day? It is so very plain and simple in our day what he's telling us. Repent of your sin. And ask Jesus Christ, ask God to forgive you through Jesus Christ. Ask him to give you that new birth. To take away your sin and to give you a new life. And I will bless thee is what he's saying to us. That's what he says. I will send to you a comforter, a new spirit. Do you see how all the way along that he's had these things in order for his people? And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it with hewn stone Oh, for if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. He says, don't do these things to your honor and to your glory. You going out and trying to do things of your own self. And to make it 
where it is something that look at what I have done. He says, just go out and pick up the stones and do this. Don't try to hew them up and do them where it's all so fancy and looks so great. For if thou lift thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. If you're doing anything in your name, he says, you've polluted it. And that's the thing with us today. If we're doing something in our name to look what I'm doing, I've polluted it. It's not of the Lord. Neither shall thou go up by steps into thine altar that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Just a wonderful words there of, of his commandments. I want to turn over now into Deuteronomy and read some there. This is in the 28th chapter of Deut Deuteronomy. It's two or three books forward from where you are. We'll read in the 28th chapter. Starting at the first verse, 28th chapter. And it shall come to pass if thou... If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded thee, command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, and thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Listen carefully. He was just warning these people here of the things to do. He says, if, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now that's what he was commanding these people to do. You know what he's commanding us to do? To hearken diligently unto God the Father through Jesus Christ, asking him for power over sin. For an understanding of the work here upon the earth and forgiveness of our sins. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And again in our day, all the blessings, what is the greatest blessing that can come upon us? Eternal life. And all of these blessings, that blessings of eternal life, and that blessing of that new birth, that blessing of pow the power of God shall overtake us if we are diligently seeking Him today and we are following what He asked for us to do. Putting our faith and trust in Him. That his will be done, not ours. And that we are bringing glory and honor to him, not ourself. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall thou shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall the be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. 
The Lord shall cause thine enemies to rise up against thee and to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And that's what he's telling us today, that he will give to us that power, he'll give to us that new birth, if. We walk in his ways. He has commanded us to walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, and in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, and he will open that to us today, that good treasure of the Lord, the good treasure of God. Has it been opened unto you today? Do you know him? Are you walking upright with him today? The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. He shall make you the head over Satan in our day. He carried these people into battle and they won. He gave them victories as long as they followed him, as long as they kept his commandments. There was times when he told them, there was a time that he says, now you go into this city right after they came out, one of the first cities that they went into. He says, you go into there and you destroy this city, but do not partake of the spoil of the things that are there, but only certain things. And he says, do not partake of the silver and the gold and the clothes and these things. Do not spoil that. They went in. But there was one that was a man that he saw something that he lusted after, something that he coveted after. The Lord says, do not covet these things. And he says, to keep my commandments, to do what I have asked you to do. And he went in and he took, I believe it was a wedge of gold or silver and some clothing and stuff. And he brought it back into the camp there of these people that God had said you will be victorious if you keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in my ways. And they went into the next battle and they lost. Why? Because someone in the body there, in the body of the people of the Lord, had not kept the commandments. And look around throughout. Look what God could do with His body of Christ today if we were all walking at one with Him. Look what He could do. Do you think that His power is limited within us? Because there may be someone that is not walking in accordance with his word today not walking in his ways but lusting after the things of the world lusting after how can I glorify this body but what did he do here and God told them First Joshua, I believe it was, he fell on his face and he says, Lord, you told me that we would, be vic we would see victory. And why are we losing? He says, there's trouble in the camp. 
And he took them man for man. Family for family and man for man. And they found where the problem was. And they took him out. He was stoned to death because he had not followed the words of God. And in our day today, if we do not follow his commandments, live in accordance with his word, there will come a day when we will be destroyed just as he, he will clean up his people. They cleaned it up in that day. Him and his whole family. And they went on to see victory. Let's see victory, my friends. Hear his word. Let it be written in your mind, written in your heart. And see victory. Let's turn to the 13th chapter of Romans. And see what he has to say in the days after Christ <clears throat> was here upon the earth. <clears throat> Thirteenth chapter. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that be or ordained of God. And I believe that he's talking about the powers in the church. I believe that that's what he's talking about, that we should, that those for us as Christians to be subject to the powers of the church that he has ordained here to be over his people, to be preachers and teachers of his people here upon the earth. He says, the powers that are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. If you resist the power, the words that are being spoken, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. If his word is being preached by someone that God has ordained to preach his message, and you and I resist those ordinances of God that he has laid out here. And we resist, he says, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. I don't want to receive that. I want to receive victory. I want to honor and glory him, not myself, and see victory. I want to walk with integrity. The integrity just as we just read about. Walk in His way. For rulers are not a terror of good works, but of evil. Thou then, thou then not be afraid of the power. Do that which is good. And thou shalt have praise of the same. Do that that is good, that the Spirit of the Holy Ghost will do within you. And that will be a good work, my friends. And you shall have praise of the same, he says. But when we try to bring glory to ourselves, we bring damnation upon us. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he, that, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. He is a minister of God to thee for good. Think about that. The preacher, the teacher, the one that's ordained of God. He says he is a minister of God for thee, for you, for good. 
Think of it, if it's bringing chastening and rebuking upon you, it is the love and it is for your good so that you can get out of those things, burn it up here in the land of the living and be saved in the end. Suffer the loss here, but be saved at that final day. Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake, be subject unto the powers that are ordained of God. If it is His Word that is being preached today here by me, my friends, if that is the case, then you must accept it as a Word of God and you must live by it or you are rejecting the Word of God. And that is then a revenger to execute upon him the raft of God. And that will be by God, not by me. But he will be the one that reigns out that raft upon those that do not accept his word today, just as it was in the days 4,000 years ago when the people were hearing the word of God and they knew and understood that they had to listen to that. Or the wrath of God would be rained out upon them. He said, if you live in accordance and do these things, God will be with you. And if we live in accordance with His Word today, God will be with us. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, Fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. O oh, no man, anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law, and loving one another, having such a love for you that we are willing to point out the things that God would have so that you might have it cleaned up in your life and see victory. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Now listen, here's what is being said by a servant of God. That these things were written in his mind, written in his, in his heart. Yes, I'm sure Paul understood all about these things from a youth up. He was taught these things. And here he is proclaiming these same things that would have been proclaimed 2,000 years before to the people. Here Paul was teaching it to these people. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If we are not coveting what our neighbor has, that we are glad that he's got that, that is basically loving thy neighbor as thyself. Because we don't want to take anything away from him because we wouldn't want it taken away from us if we had it. But this is also the law of grace. He says that love the Lord thy God and no other God shall thou serve. And to love thy neighbor as thyself, he says, on these two commandments hang all the law of grace, the law of righteousness in us today. Thou shalt listen again again of that. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. And if we think that, now you was reading in the Old Testament this morning, I'm reading in the New Testament. I'm reading words that Jesus Christ or God inspired Paul to have written and to write to these people and for us to be able to read them today and know that this is good for us in our day. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love the Lord, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. What kind of love do you have today for your neighbor, for yourself? 
He says, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time that it is now high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the time is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Now friends, that is what each and every one of us must do. We need to do that. He says, the night is far spent. Our life is, is going away rapidly. The time is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Cast off the lust of the flesh. Cast off the things that we are doing in our body to bring glory to it. How are we dressing that body? Do we take it and scantily dress it and put it around with people to try to get people to look at my body? He says, here, awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Let's awake out of that darkness. Awake out of that sleep. Dress that body the way it should be. Don't take it out scantily dressed. But cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. What is the armor of light? The Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Let that be on us. Let that be what is being on us. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering and wantonness. Not in strife and envying. And look around throughout the world. Is that, that's what we can see throughout the world today. Those things should never be in, a, in the mind or in the, in the way a Christian is walking. He says, let us walk honestly. As in the day. As that everybody can see what we are doing. That it is prevalent what we are doing. Let us walk at all times. Do what as as. What we do in the dark, what we do when people can't see us, so to speak, let it be the same that we would do right in the open with all people. That is how we should be living our life, walking honestly as in the day, not in rioting and in drunkenness of the things of this world and going after the things of this world as those who are rioting after it, not caring about anything but their own self-care. Not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Be careful with that and listen to it carefully. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. How can you put it on? Accepting Him. Receiving that new birth. And he says, no, not provision for the flesh. For the lust of the flesh. Don't make provisions for that. That you are able then to go out and to do and follow the lust of the flesh. Don't be looking at how far can I get to that line and not cross over into sin. But be thinking about how far can I stay away from that line so that I am not close to sin in my life. That's what we need to be looking at. 
that we aren't doing something that might create someone lust in someone else because the way I am dressing the places I'm going the brings out things I bring before my eyes he says let no evil thing be brought before your eyes be careful we have so much you do today with social media and the internet and everything else it can be used as a good tool but it is the most dangerous thing that has ever been on this earth in my opinion that Satan is using it rapidly to destroy people the social media telephones and stuff that is not being used the way they should be the internet and it is so full of self and so full of trying to impress someone so full of sex and immorality and violence and hatred it is constantly there in front of you if you watch these things and you pay attention to them and you see people constantly with that in their mind and what they're involved in it is a dangerous thing and parents with your children I see children learning these things at an early age and it is so dangerous right at the tip of their fingers they have stuff that you would not imagine. And if you don't believe that they will be looking and, and seeking after that thing, you're pretty naive because they will be doing it. Satan is there. And Satan will be tempting them and showing them and instructing them how to see things that will destroy them. And it will be in the same thing with you, not only in, their, in your children, but he will be there in the same manner with you if you allow it. Friends, be strong. Don't let Satan destroy us, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Don't let those things happen. Get it away. Destroy it. Let's turn over while we're here close to it. The 2 Corinthians. 10th chapter. Start at the first verse. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ who in respect and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Now there were some there, and he says, now there's some of the people there that looks upon us as if we are walking in accordance to the flesh. But that was not what Paul was doing at all. There was people there that was walking according to the flesh, and he was warning them. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mightily through God to the pulling down of the strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And that's what the power of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost can do for us. You can't do it and I can't do it on my own. But he says that this is what it is. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's not of ourselves, But it's the Spirit of the Holy Ghost that is there. But mightily through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. To the pulling down of the power of Satan. Casting down all the imaginations that Satan can put into your mind. 
That power of the Holy Ghost takes it away, my friends. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. He says that that's, that weapon that you have, he says it's not carnal. It's spiritual. And it'll over, it is so power. It is the power of God. Exalted and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Listen carefully. That Spirit bringing us unto the obedience of Christ. Now, if that Spirit's going to bring you into the obedience of Christ, are you going to have sin in your life every day just constantly that you're out here following sin and that you're living in the things here that he has said not to be involved in that we've read in different places all the way through there? We're not going to be into that because that new Spirit overcomes it, brings us to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him think of him, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so we are Christ. For though I should boast somewhat more of, your author of our authority which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. He says the Lord has given us this authority that we are able to teach, we are able to preach, we are able to bring these things to your attention which the Lord hath given us for edification, edification of his spirit and not for your destruction I should not be ashamed and I'm not ashamed of the glory of God I'm not ashamed of his spirit I want to proclaim it to each and every one of you and I want to see victory in the end that I may not seem as if I would terrify you letters for his letters say they are weighty and powerful but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible I want my speech to be strong in the Lord today I want you to be able to see his power in the words that he has spoken and he is speaking to us his power not mine but let such a one think this that such as we are in word by letters when we are abbot such will we be in deed when we are present for we dare not make ourselves of the number nor compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. But we will not boast of the things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule of God has distributed to us a measure to reach even unto you. And that's what I would boast in today. I'm not boasting in myself, but I would boast in the power of God. Look what he has done, and look what he will do for you. According to the measure of the rule of God, he's promised this. I send to you a new birth. Do you believe that that new birth there is weak? Which God hath distributed to us a measure of, to reach even unto you. To be able to preach and to teach you about God the Father and what He's done for us. For we search, stretch not ourselves beyond our measure as though we reached not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors. Having hope, but having hope. When your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. And that is what I want. And I beg today, not boasting of things without our measure, 
that is, of other men's laborers. But having hope, and I have hope today, that somebody is listening. When your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. We shall be increased spiritually, abundantly to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Remember that all the way through that everything that we do is for the glory of the Lord, not for ourselves. For he is not commended himself. For, for not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. Keep that in mind. It's not what all we can show and what all we can do to this body to commend it ourselves and to get man's approval. But it's who the Lord commands. Is he commending your life today? Is he commending it? Or is he rejecting it? I wonder if we thought much about, as we said, I believe, last week. Can you imagine standing before Jesus Christ and trying to convince him you've lived a holy life? You will stand before him. And your life that you are living today and your faith and your trust in Him, your commitment to Him, and whether or not you have made that connection with God the Father through Jesus Christ will already be there. The evidence will be there when you stand. No matter what you say, the evidence is there. Can you imagine what that will be? He has promised. And he says he will have those that he says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter you into the kingdom of my Father. He says there are many mansions in my Father's house. I go to prepare a place for you. Don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. And let's imagine standing there before Him knowing that we are saved by the blood of the Lamb. Not by your works, but by the blood of the Lamb. But that Spirit within you has been creating works that's acceptable to Him. We'll bring this meeting to a close. We'll sing number 66. If the light has gone out.
harboring. Sister Harbor, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And may the Lord receive. <clears throat> that wonderful light can shine bright in your soul. That song there, very much like what we were just talking about. When before the judgment's bar you shall stand. And the deeds that you have here had control, the evidence is there. Let that light be strong. Let it shine strong in you. Encourage one another. Encourage our young people. Go to the Lord. Ask Him to be your Savior. To forgive you your sins. Let us pray. To God the Father, thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for the wonderful words of life that you've given to us. And help us to take heed to what you have been teaching your people for thousands of years. For us to be obedient to you, to hear your calling, and to be strong in your spirit. Your spirit is strong. And to remember that you've warned us about the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing to overcome. The spirit, your spirit, and it is your will that we be saved. We thank you for that. We appreciate what you have done. We thank you for your son. We thank you for the love and mercy. And we ask you to be with those that are struggling today. We ask you to be with this whole congregation that they are able to hear your word this week and let it be written in their hearts and in their minds and that they follow you. Let you direct them in everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like for you, if you could, to wait just a minute.